Joining me on the show is Kyle Richards, one of my favorite housewives of Beverly Hills and actually of all time. Uh, the first annual Kyle Richards Mammogram Day at the Bedford Breast Center in Beverly Hills. This is an amazing thing she's doing, you guys. She's bringing attention to doing self-exam breast exams. You should check out her PSA on her Instagram page. I also posted it on our, our show page. Uh, and I'm really, really proud of her because this is important stuff. And she's so brave, especially in that PSA. I'm like... Oh my God. But she's going to talk all about it. Kyle Richards, welcome back to my show. Thank you. So good to see you. I know. You look gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Thanks so much. Just so, um, <laughs> just living in Beverly Hills. Just in my well, pajamas on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. We're in like Christmas jammies already. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? Yes, it's the best. From the waist up. <laughs> We look like we can go to dinner. Um, so I want to talk about this. This is uh, the first annual Kyle Richards Mammogram Day at Bedford Clinic. By the way, that was the very first place I got my mammogram. Uh, was it? It was. I loved it. The doctor and the PSA, I'm like, that's who I had. Like, it was an amazing experience. I thought it was going to be a nightmare. The whole place is pink. It felt pretty. It's cozy and warm in there. You don't. It doesn't feel sterile like at a hospital. That's right. That's right. You feel like part of part of a little club, Pink Ladies Club. So what made you want to get involved? Well, you know, I lost my mother to breast cancer 18 years ago. And the reason we lost our mother is because she was too afraid to get a mammogram. She had not had a mammogram for five years and she had never done a self-check. So to me, when October run, rolls around and, you know, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I really want to use my platform to spread the word and spread the message to all women to do self-exams, get their mammograms, because early detection is key and it really will save lives. Even from my PSA, somebody went to the Bedford Breast Center and they've already done a biopsy and are being treated right now. So. Wow. Yeah, it's a very, you know, very, very important to me. And I have four daughters too, so. Right, so you definitely have to lead by example. Um, the crazy part is when I watched your PSA, I was like, okay, I'm 40. Mm -hmm. This is the first time that I have learned how to do a self breast exam. I didn't know how to do one. And then I checked the comments and everybody was saying the same thing. I'm ashamed to say I had no idea how to do a self breast exam. How come we don't know this? I don't know. I did not know either until I sat down with Dr. Richardson and she actually taught me myself. And not only that, to be, you know, full disclosure, I would get scared every time. I would get like a quarter way around and be like, oh God, that's freaking me out. I don't like the way that feels. Never mind. Um, so now I just, I want to take the fear out of it, you know, which is why, you know, I, I did the PSA myself and I want to take the fear out of it or, you know, the awkwardness out of it. And, you know, like you said about the Bedford Breast Center, when I go there, I like to go with a girlfriend. I went the other day with my sister, Kathy, and then you can have like lunch after even do your nails, <laughs> take care of your boobs, take care of your nails, whatever it is, <laughs> and just to make it like not so daunting, you know? Totally. You know, I do that with my girlfriend now, my best friend. We do our gyno appointments back to back because, you know, the gyno bounces from room to room. So we're like, <laughs> let's go together and then let's go for lunch because then we keep something to look forward to. It's not like, eh. So to wrap it around a little friend lunch date, I think is a great idea. What exactly. about, you know, I, I know that you don't have implants, right? No, I do not. God, those are all your titties. They're just- they are juicy and beautiful. I'm so jealous. I wish they were smaller, but they, they are mine. I've never had implants. Thank God. Because at one point I wanted to make them smaller and get an implant. And my sister, Kathy actually was like, I will never allow that. There's absolutely no way, no way. And she always talked me out of it. And I'm really grateful because now, um, all my friends are taking them out. So I'm like, okay. I'm, so I'm yeah. part of that group of like investigating how to take them out, you know, like there's my health as we get older. That's what we are most concerned with. But then I'm still in that vanity kind of like, I don't want zucchinis, you know, right. where my husband has to pick them off off the floor to play with them. So. <laughs> well, they can do amazing things, by the way. I mean, I know people who have had lips without an implant and all that. So there's many things that can be done. I know for me, I have friends who have them and love them. I know my personality. I would be thinking I had something going on with me every day because of my anxiety. So I'm always looking for something. I think I'm always dying anyway. So I get it. You know, there's, cause there's always bumps in the backs too. Like I'm always like, I had to go 
And that actually the Bedford place was like, okay, that lump is actually just scar tissue. Uh, well, they, they actually said that it's not any more difficult to read in a mammogram with implants at all. So, you know, and it doesn't make it more complicated. So, which I was surprised to hear. So people who do have implants, don't stress. You know, for someone that's a hypochondriac, I thought you handled that scare you had at one, one appointment with Lisa, Rena. Oh yeah. Very well, because when I watched it, I was like, oh my God, I, I would have been to the cameras, get out and just fell to the floor, called my lawyer, had a will going, like, that's where I go. Well, that I did go there. And it's funny because the crew, you know, they've been with me since the beginning of the show. And this is my 11th year now. And they're like family to me. And, you know, you saw their faces and they have a job to do, but they felt bad. And they kind of like put the camera away. And then the producer was like, and it was really scary. And it was my daughter's 30th birthday that day. So, so she's born on Halloween. It was actually Halloween that we, we went in that day. And all I kept thinking was, I can't believe I'm going to have to tell my children this. And I was like the same age when my mom found her lump. I was 30. So I had that in my head and I was like, I'm going to have to tell my kids this. I I have got to put it out of my head until tomorrow, but thank God it was okay. It was okay. And I can't remember, did you have to do a biopsy and then find out or did they just do the, they just had to go back in and take another look. And now when I went this time, they said they had to compare it to last time and like, something about the tissue has moved, whatever. I don't know, but it was all good. I just had mine done the other day at the Bedford Breast Center and it was amazing. The, the best part of the day was having the women come in that you know are not in the position to get a mammogram and they were able to come in for a free mammogram and screening on this Kyle Richards mammogram day in honor of my mom, Kathy. So oh. it was amazing. You know, they They were coming in all day and, you know, getting good news. And there were some people that, you know, had some concerns. So that's what made the day so special. Kyle, good for you. Doesn't that feel good when you're doing something good out there in the world? I know. So good. And usually people don't talk about the good things. (laughs) They were like, we are going to talk about this because it's really, really important. And, you know, even watching the show, when people saw, you know, me getting a mammogram on the show, they said to me, thank you so much. You know, I saw the show and I forgot. I I didn't realize I hadn't had a mammogram in three years. And I went and they found something, but I'm being treated. So you're like, gosh, you know, this crazy show can actually really be good for something. It's true. Well, it also took the courage and the brains and, you know, for you to say, hey, this is a good idea to show this. When I was doing my reality show with Donnie, I had to convince him to do a prostate exam. I'm like, listen, it's really important for guys. I know you're not a big fan of someone else sticking your finger up your butt, but you got to go. Let's make it on camera so people can see that Donnie Wolver can do it anyone's husband can do it. And it was an episode and I couldn't believe the feedback the amount of people going like, thank you. My dad died of prostate cancer. I'm like this needs to happen. Exactly. So. exactly. And I think people are so afraid, you know, I'm also one of those people, especially with my anxiety, I'm afraid. So, you know, if we show other people doing it and you don't make it so scary and especially like, you know, you hear the word cancer and you think, well, that's it. We're done. It's not, it really is not. Even if they do find something, you can be fine and live a long life. So don't be afraid. Plus the the way they're coming out with new breakthroughs every, every few months, I'm hearing something. Yep. Yes, exactly. I mean, honestly, you know, that's what's so frustrating when I think about my mom and, you know, that she just didn't get a mammogram because she was afraid, you know, and, you know, I think, my gosh, you know, she could still be here with, her daughters and her grandchildren and now her great grandchildren because Nikki and Baron and my niece Brooke, they all have kids. Right. Like, gosh, I, it's just a shame, you know? So I know it is a shame. And then I always look for any type of silver lining, which is look at the gift that you're giving so many women out there because of such a sad experience in your life. You know, like you are helping so many people because of it. Well, that's the goal. And I know my mom would be proud and, you know, hopefully, you know, we save other moms, daughters, friends, sisters out there. And, um, I just, so you guys, if it helps you guys, I do a, um, all my, all my exams around Valentine's day. Cause I do to self love. I'm taking okay. care of myself. I love myself. That is my Valentine's day gift. That way every year I know what Valentine's day, they're all wrapped around in a little box and then I can remember, because how many times have we been like, uh, did, when did I get my last pap? Or when did I get my last mammogram? Yeah. So 
It's kind well, of you like, know, also we get busy and forget. Like I went in one year and they're like, I, I was like, oh, I'm on time. It's October. And they're like, you actually skipped last year. And I was like, I didn't realize the time went so fast. And that year can make a huge difference in saving your life. It's totally true. Um, I got to move into, by the way, check out her Instagram page for that PSA and spread it to your friends because this is important. Um, I want to slide right into talking about uh, Paris because I had her on the show and I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of her too. I was like, girl, see what happens like when you can get behind a cause when you turn it into service to others. It's, and she's like, it changed my life. How proud of you? How proud are you of her? I'm so incredibly proud of her, not just because she got behind this cause, but she had the confidence finally in her life to be herself and be free. And I think that being open and honest about this really freed her so much. And now I'm so happy that people are seeing the real Paris. You know, you know, she even says in the documentary, she, you know, it starts out with her saying, Hi, this is Paris. And then this is Paris. Like, like, oh my God. Like even the fact that she's talking about that, you know, it was just a facade. And I used to sit back and hear people talk bad about my niece and, you know, think believing lies about her. And it was so frustrating because she's actually one of the sweetest girls. She has such a big heart, so kind. And it just really shows, do not judge someone unless you have walked in their shoes. That so well said. And the, the years that I've gotten to see her here and there, and I've, I will say in this business, she is one of those sweet ones and you can't find a bad blind item on her. Like she is true and true, a good person. That's why I'm like, I'm really happy for her that she's speaking her truth. How did her mom, your sister take it behind the scenes? Like how, how did she manage? Well, I think that she's, you know, I don't know if she's even seen the whole thing. I think it was a really hard time for my sister, Kathy, but I think that she's happy that Paris, you know, is talking about this now. And of course, you know, it was a very difficult time for her and they were at their wits end. They didn't know what to do. She was a rebel and they really, they didn't know what to do. And they were young parents and they were just, you know, afraid and thinking, you know, how are we going to, how do we keep this girl safe? So nobody knew what was, you know, going on. And I'm so happy. And so is my family that Paris is shedding light on this situation. Do you think, do you think a lot of these behavioral places need to shut down or reorganize? 100%. I think they really need to be investigated because I've heard this story from so many people now from different places and they don't know. And parents are desperate. You know, we worry so much about our kids. Like, what if they get into this or they get into drugs or, you know, what if something, they get out in the night, something happens to them, you know, even more so with girls, maybe you worry about, you know, you know, them being alone at night out somewhere and they're, they're scared and they're desperate and they think, okay, well, maybe this is the answer. And they're preying on the parents too. So I think it's just really, really um, important. I think a lot of these places need to be investigated. I do too. I think it's, I think it's time. Um, I, I do want to slide now into some tea. I want to say have a little bit of tea with you. Ooh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I've got my little questions here. Um, let's talk about the new housewife, uh, Crystal. How do you like her? I, I like her, you know, we, uh, I've met her a couple times now and I think she's going to be just great. She's very outgoing and confident and I think that she, she's very smart and she's beautiful. I think that she's going to be really good for the show. What does it take to hold your own on that show? You really have to be a strong, confident person. You know, it's really hard coming into this group. I, I don't know. I mean, I could say I totally get it, but I don't because when I came into the show, you know, 11 years ago, we were all starting together for the first time. I can't imagine what it feels like coming into this group of this, you know, show that's, you know, successful all these years. And, you know, I mean, it must be so strange. So you really have to have a lot of confidence and, you know, be very opinionated and outspoken and not afraid to speak up. So I I think she, she fits all that. (laughs) This is the part that, that freaks, that makes me crazy with the housewives. It's like, Everyone waits for that time of the year where if someone gets renewed or not, I call it like the room where it happens because it's like, you know, the room, you get invited to the room and you get discussed if your contract gets picked up and you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't in terms of your performance that year, because if you're too boring, you get cut. If you're too crazy, you get cut. So it's this fine line, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. You know, it, 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 it takes a lot more than people realize. (laughs) 
Um, you know, yes, it really is. You look at some people and you think, you know, why are they not on the show anymore? They were so great. Or, you know, why is this one still there? So, um, yeah, it really, it's just, why are they, How, who decides? I think a lot of it has to do with, um, I think research or whatever it is, you know, I think that, you know, I think that's basically what it boils down to. I mean, we'd have to ask Andy Cohen this, but I think that's really what it is. Focus you know? groups, focus, smoke. It can't be if someone doesn't have stuff going on in their lives or whatever, but you know, when it's not that, it could be something else. I don't know. I really, you know. And don't you get in trouble if you withhold information and then it comes out outside the show? I mean, they like you to be very open and honest and forthcoming, you know, um, they'll be sometimes like, how come this wasn't brought up? And it wasn't because like, there were certain things that the audience was like, why didn't this ever come up? You know, why didn't, you know, they talk about the lawsuits or this and that, you know, if the girls are not bringing it up, it's not going to come up. First of all, most of us know you can't talk about lawsuits. So right. if there was something, you know, our, our show, the girls are like, you, you, I don't feel like, oh my God, they're coming at me. I have to be so careful. If they brought it up, we would talk about it. Or if, you know, I could have brought up something to one of the other girls, but we're not out to hurt each other. So, you know, sometimes things come up, sometimes things don't come up, but our life is out there. I mean, everyone knows everything that is going on regardless. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> anyone with anything around here. Were you so shocked like everybody else when Teddy was not coming back? Even Teddy was shocked. Yes, I, I really was because um, I thought she was a great housewife because she's very open and honest and she shows her whole life, you know, her family, her kids and everything. And um, personally, I was just sad because I love her and she's a great person and I like to be with her, but she'll be in my life always. So, you know, and she just moved down the street from me and I was just playing with her baby today. So, and she's good. She's happy. She's, she's busy with her work and her family, her new house. So she's good. Good. I mean, sometimes, you know, when they let people go, they also come back as friends. So never say never, right? Like never maybe say never. never. Exactly. Never say never. We've had a lot of people come back. I know. And speaking of never say never is Denise Richards. I'm not sure she'll ever come back. <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, she was going to, but not really sure. I think Andy commented on that. So I'll let it, uh, let it go. <laughs> and then is Tori coming? Tori Spelling is going to honestly be a friend? No. Oh, that's a rumor. That's as far as I know, that's a rumor. So yeah, like every year they say different things. Um, you know, they always say, you know, this person's joining, that person's joining. And it's usually not true. Usually not true. Sometimes yeah. there's a surprise. Sometimes, but usually it's not true. Honestly. Would you want her on the show? I think Tori's great. I've known her, oh my God, forever. But yeah, I think she'd be great. I think she She'll come with the drama, that's for sure. Uh, last question. Maurizio, my husband, Don, Donnie, watched um, Million Dollar Listing LA, and he's like, uh, you tell Kyle that I really love Maurizio. It was good. I, I like seeing him in action. I like seeing him do his thing. And uh, which leads me to, will he do his own spinoff type show? You know, we, I mean, people have talked to us about it, honestly, you know, with running the agency and, you know, me being on the show and doing my other things I'm doing with my clothing line and I'm still doing my acting thing too. So it's a lot. So I don't even know how he could do all that and have the family and the business involved. I don't know if it was maybe just the agency. People have asked us about that too, but you never know. One thing I do know is we are not separated. We've never been separated. And there was a rumor about that too. So just to <laughs> clarify that too. I'm, I'm glad you clarified that. You're one couple that I, I didn't even ask it because I don't think you guys ever will. Ever. It's so funny because, you know, I mean, in, when I first started this journey 11 years ago, when lies would come up, I would get so upset and so worked up. And I've obviously got you know, a thicker skin, but this one really threw us for a loop because we were in Aspen together and my husband posted a picture. We had just gone on a beautiful bike ride and we were having lunch at Woody Creek and he posted a picture. And then he said, this comment says, they're glad the rumors aren't true. What is that about? And I said, I have no idea. So we Googled our names and it came up. It was like on TMZ, but TMZ said it actually wasn't true. But the headline was, is like, oh, is there something? And then the story was, it's not true, but the headlines there. So then people start picking up on it. Totally. And it, it came from someone saying there was a California housewife that was separated after having a hot girl summer. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I just stopped me. So anyway, I, now I realize it was actually someone from another show. 
Right. But the headline was still there. So nonetheless, frustrating, especially when your kids are older too. You're like, they don't need to deal with this. They didn't even care. We're like, guys, you, have you heard this rumor? They're like, no, we don't have Google alerts or anything. So anyway, um, we are good and happy good. and yeah, with no hot girl summer for me. <laughs> Well, you're a, an amazing couple and I'm, I'm rooting Thank for you, you. guys. I, 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 didn't even, I wasn't going to ask you because I'm like, they're never, they're totally in love. You remind me of like me and Donnie, like you guys are solid love. We're celebrating our 25th wedding anniversary in January. Holy 25 God. years. Any, se- any secret? How do you keep it hot and... You know, I mean, I mean, the hot and heavy, like, I don't know the secret to that. I think like you're either matched or you're not, but I do believe, and I finally, like people ask me all the time, what is the secret? I think one of the most important things you can do, and I haven't said this yet to people is surround yourself with other happily married couples. That is very important because you don't have any friends that are like cheaters or separating or problems or fighting. Like you really have to find a group of friends that are solid couples too, because it's, I don't know, it's contagious or something. I don't know, but I think it's a very important part of the equation. I, th- I think it's a really good piece of advice and it makes me think I gotta go find new friends now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can <laughs> hang out with us. <laughs> Done. Done, we'll probably be there soon. Kyle Richards, thank you so much. For more information, where can people go? They can go to the bedforbreastcenter.com and they can look at the PSA on my Instagram, which is Kyle Richards 18 and also we posted on our show page. Thank you so much for coming and talking to us. I love you. Send my thank love to your family. You. So are you. And thank you for posting yeah. on your page too. And say hi to Donnie. Of course okay. I will. And we'll thank you. Come back soon. Soon. I would love nothing more in the world. <laughs> okay. Bye Kyle. Thank, thank you. Sweetheart. Bye. Bye hun.